Peter Ruckman's shocking words about American churches. You say, who is Peter Ruckman? Well, if you don't know who he is, um, author of this book right here and many other commentaries on the New Testament, one of the greatest King James Bible-believing preachers of the 20th century, a little bit into the 21st century, died a number of years ago, but uh, one of the men I learned from. And um, he had some major issues, but he had some really good stuff. And, um, but this is a very shocking admission. I was getting, doing some work on a sermon, some sermon notes here for the future. And uh, going through the thing of his commentary on 1 Timothy chapter 3. And he says here, um, page 71, Not given to wine, no striker, not greedy of filthy lucre. Verse 3, 1 Timothy 3, verse 3. And then Peter Ruckman writes, He is not to be a heavy drinker, he is not to go around beating his adversaries up, and he is not to be greedy for money. See 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 5, 10, and comments. This automatically disqualifies about 3,000 quote-unquote once-married men who covet land, buses, property, offerings, bank accounts, loans, interest, and investments. We are obviously dealing with ideal qualifications for an ideal pastor. If there is a pastor in America who meets all, all of the qualifications in 1 Timothy 3, 1 through 7, I have perhaps met him only about three, three occasions, three out of about 800. Um, I have to disagree with Peter Ruckman here. I very strongly disagree. There's no scripture there. In, in, in 1 Timothy chapter 3, it gives the qualifications for a bishop. There isn't any kind of a thing of, now, these are the ideal conditions, and you, if you don't get there, well, eh, what can you do? You see, the church buildings of the 20th century tore down the standards, the Bible standards, they're because they're social clubs. You have to keep the little social thing going there, and, and if there's perversion problems or financial problems or other things, some guy's a heretic or whatever. Well, let's just, you know, let's, let's keep the little group together, our local church together and everything because we're family here and whatever. We lowered the standards by having church buildings. I mean, think about the admission that Peter Ruckman just said here. And he traveled all over the country, traveled to different, you know, nations and everything as well, but traveled all over America preaching in churches during the uh, glory years of Baptist churches and he said he knew of three pastors that qualified for 1 Timothy chapter 3, the standards, out of about 800. Think about that. So, um, when I've been really rough on the church buildings, again, you know, just to explain my stand again, people say, you know, uh, Brian says that uh, one of the things people say about me is that I teach that Anybody that's ever gone to a church building is lost and on their way to hell. I've never taught that because I'd be condemning myself. I've preached in church buildings. Okay, so um, no. Uh, going to a church building does not automatically mean that you are lost in, in as far as, you know, I walked into one or something. Oh, now I'm lost or something. No. I just have to question people. Again, part of what I do in this ministry is I say things that are very provocative. You know, I provoke people to think, in other words, not provocative as in perverted provocative. That's what most people think of, but the actual definition provocative means I'm provoking. I'm, I'm getting people to think and say, I have to question some things about my life and my walk with Jesus Christ. That's what I try to do. All right. If you're going to some place, it's not some phallic temple looking thing and whatever else, and you, and you call it a church and it's a fellowship that you get together and you aren't doing all the Roman Catholic trappings of Sunday best and all the, you know, altar calls and the tithes and all the other stuff. Well, okay, fine. You're just fellowshipping with other brethren. That's fine. Are you doing things for the Lord, though? What's the fruit that you're bearing from your church gathering? Those are things. I just want people to think about that stuff. All right. I'm, again, I'm not just coming out and saying you're a heretic because you go to some church building. But what I'm saying is there has been an intense, huge level of cover-up over the years with Baptist churches especially. I mean, Methodist and Pentecostal and all the other quote-unquote Protestant ones out there, of course, we expect that. But of the ones that use the King James Bible and claim to be Bible believers in all matters of faith and practice, there have been so many cover-ups 
in these places. I've seen it. I've experienced it. You have too if you've gone to Baptist churches. Just the other day, a brother sent me this article here. I'll put it up on screen. It says, Report Top Southern Baptist Stonewalled Sex Abuse Victims. This came out uh, May 23rd this year. Southern Baptist Convention, which uh, Peter Ruckman was a part of. And when he, one of his sermons, I'm not going to play the clip, but one of the sermons, I remember him talking about Jack Hiles, and he said people were coming to him and telling him that Jack Hiles was involved in this sin, and he said, he said, oh, you, know, you know, I don't want to hear about it. Don't talk to me about it. He covered up for Jack Hiles. Jack Hiles was one of the most evil, wicked men of the 20th century within Baptist churches. That guy was a, was a scoundrel, you know, really messed up doctrinally and everything too. But Ruckman covered up for him. And that always bothered me, and I thought, what in the world is he doing? Being a good Baptist, I guess. But, well, you know, it's just uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3, it's, those are just ideal conditions, you know. We, don't, we can't uh, actually live up to that. It's just, it's just ideal. No, it's not. No, it isn't. Um, the standards in 1 Timothy chapter 3 should be followed to the very letter. And if somebody doesn't have those qualifications, then they're not a bishop. Plain and simple. So um, I'm going to be coming out and doing a lot of kicking of a lot of these Baptists and things. There are some hirelings out there that are greedy of filthy lucre. So be looking for a um, sermon on that coming out in the not too distant future. But I uh, just wanted to put this video together and just say even one of the greatest Bible teachers out there um, traveled all over the country back in the good old days. And whatever else and even back then he said he knew less he knew three out of 800 probably 800 churches that he'd gone to three men that even qualified for first timothy chapter three just absolutely disgusting and that's why i tell people stay away from the church buildings i mean if you don't want to believe me go ahead go to them and you will see the fighting you will see the hypocrisy you will see the two different lives when you're in church and when you're not in church you'll see it You'll see it. And we're not talking about, well, nobody's perfect. Everybody has some sin in their life. I, I understand that. But what we're talking about is gross, horrible, you know, wicked things that go on in these church buildings. Um, they're not of God. They never have been. They never will be. All right. Uh, you can watch more of my studies on that if you want to. But um, what more can I say? So we will see you in the next study. Thank you for watching.